All right, so if you look at the different polygons that we've already talked about, the quadrilateral and, and the triangle, and you identify the number of sides, and triangles three, quadrilateral four, and there's some other information that you want to be able to look at. Okay. When we talked about the, the interior angles of a triangle, what is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? It was 180, right? Okay. And so if you look at the number of triangles that are formed by the diagonals of a, of a triangle, there are no diagonals. So it just forms that one triangle itself. Okay. At the same time, if we draw in diagonals in any quadrilateral to form triangles, how many triangles can be formed by drawing in the diagonals? Now it's two. So each of those triangles is 180 degrees. Therefore, the total sum of the interior angles we found for any quadrilateral to be 360. Okay. And so if you look at this, you have one triangle at 180. You have two triangles at 180. And this is the process that you can use to derive the sum of the interior angles for any polygon. So if we move to a five-sided figure a pentagon. If we draw in all the diagonals from one vertex, how many triangles are going to be formed here? You have three triangles. If each triangle is 180 degrees, what's the total sum of all those angles? If you calculate that out, you get 540. And then if we have a hexagon, and you look at all the diagonals you can form in a hexagon from one vertex. And then count the number of triangles formed. One, two, three, four. You have four triangles. Each one is 180 degrees. So what's the total sum of the interior angles for any hexagon? And again, it's just a matter of using this pattern. Well, the pattern can be, uh, the generic pattern can be found. So if you have some figure with n sides, the number of triangles formed, how do the number of triangles formed relate to the number of sides? It's all two fewer, right? So if you took the number of sides minus 2 and then multiplied by 180, you'll get the sum of the interior angles. For a triangle, again, when we went back and we identified the sum of the exterior angles, what we did was we extended the sides to create our exterior angles and then looked at how many linear pair there were. So here, the interior, interior and exterior angle pair, the linear pair, we have three different linear pair. So if you have three linear pair, how many of those are accounted for, for from our triangle, the interior angles? One of those linear pair. And so what's going to be left for the total sum of the exterior angles? Again, we had three groups of 180 minus one group of 180 leaves two groups of 180. And we found our exterior angle for a triangle to be 360, the total sum of them. And we also found the same thing for quadrilateral, right? If you look here, we have four now linear pair. So four groups of 180. Of those four groups of 180, two of those two groups of 180 represent the interior angles, and so what's left for the sum of the exterior angles? Two groups of 180 or 360. So this pattern will continue. If you look at it here, we have five linear pair, so five groups of 180 minus here we have three groups of 180 to account for the interior angles, which is going to leave. 360. So do you ever need to do a calculation to find the sum of the exterior angles? No. It's always going to be 360. And it doesn't matter how many sides it has, the sum of the exterior angles is always going to be 360.